Thank You, Jesus. Praise God. Thank You, Lord. Let's bow our hearts to the Lord right now and thank Him. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Lord. Thank You for making Yourself real to us, Lord. Thank You for Your Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. You are a great and a mighty God. In fact, the only true God. And we praise You this morning, Lord. We thank You, Jesus, for all of Your goodness for all of your mercy, for all of your grace, for every good and perfect gift that we have received comes from you. We bless you for it and thank you now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Sunday school kids, you can disband. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you for being here this morning. Appreciate you coming out. Thank you, those that are uh, watching us uh, via live stream. Don and uh, Darlene for a, a couple, praise the Lord. But uh, others out there, we want to thank you and invite you to enjoy the rest of the service with us and uh, let's just so celebrate the Lord together. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's important, uh, amen, for everybody to connect however they can. Praise the Lord. So uh, we appreciate that. Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Tim. It's always a great job. Appreciate his, yes. always uh, has some wisdom to share and, and biblical, and that's what makes it good. Amen. By the Spirit of God. So yes. we appreciate that. Also, uh, Suzanne and Tammy and all y'all that were worshiping the Lord and singing, we appreciate them leading us in worship, helping us to enter into the presence of the Lord in a way that uh, only believers can do. Praise God. Amen. One more week and we'll be doing the Christmas thing. Hallelujah. And, uh, but the truth is for us, every day Jesus is being born again yes. into our lives and into the lives of those that we share him with. Praise the Lord. Debbie. Well, before you get started, I just want to say, Yvette is moving from my house on Monday to her own apartment. Praise the Lord, Yvette. Thank the Lord. <laughs> but um, she hasn't lived alone for 10 years, and also, if you guys have any extra things, household goods, anything, um, she would really appreciate it, and um, I'm kind of trying to clean out my house and give her stuff to you. Yeah. We accumulate so much stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, anything would be appreciated. You know what? Yeah. If, uh, if you could kind of make up a little list of some of the things that are, you know, the most critical. Yeah. I'm sure we probably all got stuff in the basement or somewhere that we're, or just things that we're just not using on a regular basis. And, you know, we all know what it's like to move. It's difficult any time that you do it. And, you know, we accumulate things over the years and wonder why in the world we still have them. But, uh, yeah. amen, maybe this is, a, this is uh, the reason why. Amen. So we can share that with, uh, with someone that's just starting anew. Praise yeah. the Lord. And I just praise the Lord for Yvette and for him opening these doors for her to have a place of her own. And, that's kind of scary, you know, when you get back out all by yourself again. But God will be with you, Yvette, yes. and I'm just excited for you to take this next step in, yes. in, the, in the life that God is unfolding for you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. It's great. Yes. It's great to see the yes. Lord moving. Yes. Amen. So if you'll do that, if you'll make up a little list, right, we'll share it with everybody. And I'm sure we've all got something that we could chip in and help out a little yes. bit and make it a little more comfortable transition for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's exciting news. Praise God. I just want to say praise the Lord. That's good. Amen. You know, we were praying. We've been praying for this, for the door to open, an opportunity, and so thank God for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, singing in the shower is all fun and games until you get shampoo in your mouth, and then it becomes a soap opera. Maybe I'm the only one that sings in the shower, but that's only because I don't dare sing anywhere else. All right. Could be the victim of a, an arrest, praise the Lord. And I, you know, I'm a big uh, math fan. I'm not very good at it. In fact, uh, if I had 50 cents for every math test I flunk, I'd have like a dollar and 30 cents. Or something like that. I can't remember. But anyway, I want to say to the guy who invented zero, thanks for nothing. <laughs> praise the Lord. What do you do with a sick chemist? If you can't heal him and you can't cure him, you might as well bury him. 
Praise God. Oh, praise the Lord. Some of these are so bad they hurt when I say it. Pain is not always a bad thing, amen. I love pets, and uh, we've always had some kind of pet cat. We've still got a couple of cats, but the dog passed away here a while back. But um, uh, we've always had some kind of animals running around. And uh, I used to have a goldfish that would break dance on the carpet. Yeah, but only for like 20 seconds. Break dancing goldfish. It's just really short. But, you know, praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to talk to you this morning on a serious note uh, about why speaking the word is so critical. And we talk about it all the time, and Tammy mentioned it this morning. I know Jody has, has uh, given us uh, words that God has shared with her about speaking only what God says. And, and I think sometimes it can become... Uh, like so many things in church, just a ritual kind of thing. But I want to share with you this morning why it is so critical and why it's part of, in fact, it's one of the most important parts of Christian life. And uh, so that's, that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. And to uh, do that, we'll begin with Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 9 through 12. I've got about four different scriptures here that I'm going to start out with just to kind of get the foundation going here. But beginning with Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 9 through 12. And if you see any spots on my clothes, it, it, I didn't have an accident. My granddaughter did, <laughs> but just with a bottle of water. So <laughs> spots. She, just, she really doesn't like water. She just loves taking the cap off and putting it back on. <laughs> Praise God. So, and to make all men... See what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now remember, he created all things by the word, right? And Jesus is the word. So to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So he says to the intent that now the powers, these uh, principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church and the manifold wisdom of God. So there's stuff in the uh, atmosphere, in the uh, universe that God placed there, right? And we are to understand this to the intent now unto the principalities and powers of heavenly places might be known so that we might comprehend, amen, what it is God's done in all of this, right? Okay. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, remember again the word, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, John 16, verses 12 and 13. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. This is Jesus speaking. Howbeit when he... The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Yeah. Isaiah 45 and 11. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Isaiah 46 and verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So we... No, we realize that we are new creations. We are spirit beings. We just happen to live in a body. Our true identity is that we are spirits. We were born again. Our spirit was made alive in Christ, right? Okay, so John chapter 15, verse 19. Verse 19. 
If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. That's not necessarily bad. Praise the Lord. Chapter 17, verses 13 through 17. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth. Your word is truth. It means to be set apart, right? Yes. To not be a part of the world. Even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. We have been sanctified, amen, set apart. Right. And Jesus said, the words that I speak, they're, they're spirit and they're life. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. They're not just sweet-sounding phrases. Mm -hmm. They are literally spirit life. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are spirit beings, and just like physically we need certain things to, to operate at our highest potential or up to our highest potential, we as spirit beings, it's even more critical that we have the Word of God, yes. right? To yes. live the life at the highest potential that God intended us to live it. Yes. Amen? And so Jesus was the Word that was made flesh. And he is literally the spirit of prophecy. Amen. So it shouldn't surprise us that the Bible, the word of God, anticipated almost, in fact, it anticipated all of them, some that we haven't even got to yet, but it has anticipated all the advances of science, technology that uh, humans have discovered. Amen. For centuries, and, and we know this to be true, I mean, Columbus, that was a big deal because they thought he was going to fall off the face of the earth at some point, you know, leaving Spain. But uh, man believed the earth to be flat. But that was not scriptural. Look at uh, Isaiah 40 and verse 22. God, it is he that setteth upon the circle of the earth. Remember this? This was written thousands of years ago. And it was only a few hundred years ago that we discovered the earth isn't flat. Because they didn't bother to look in the word of God. Because it says he sat on the circle of the earth. Amen. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain. And spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. That's important too. It stretched out the heavens as a curtain. And spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. And I'll get to that in a little bit. but uh, So the earth is round. Ta-da! We've got a victory, right? Amen, right here. It's round. I swear to it. Praise God. But let's look at Psalms 19, uh, verses 1 through 6. And it'll show us some more of that. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. He's talking about people. Amen. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. Now what's that, what that says is that the solar system migrates throughout the, the galaxy. That wasn't a given. That wasn't known until recent history. And we thought it was all fixed, you know? And so space itself has properties, amen? Properties that transcend our three-dimensional understanding of reality. Now, I taught, I don't know, a few years back, and we got into the quarks and all that stuff, and I'll mention that. This isn't the message I'm, I'm bringing to you this morning, but it, it does kind of incorporate some of that. Because the Bible anticipated so much of the discoveries in modern science and physics that contradict the historic and, you know, believed beliefs 
or accepted beliefs, right? I mean, it contradicts them. So probably the most profound uh, contradiction would be the perception of the properties of the universe itself. Now, I'm not trying to be deep here. I'm just get past this. But even today, a lot of people believe that the vacuum, that space is a vacuum, mm -hmm. and uh, that it's empty. Amen. But the truth is, scientifically now, and through physics, we know that space has properties. We think it's just a big vacuum out there and nothing, right? But it has properties. It has capacitance. Now, this is, capacitance is just like capacity. It's the ability to, to contain something, right? So the capacitance is, is actually, when we're talking about space, is the displacement of a given surface across which sound can travel. Mm -hmm. How much, you know, you know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying, yeah. amen? There, there is actually stuff, you can say, capacitance that allows sound to travel. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay, so space itself has more than three dimensions, which we didn't ever believe. We just thought it was a vacuum, it was empty, period. But it actually has more than three dimensions that we're familiar with, and the Bible describes the firmament, or space, as a solid. Try flying your spaceship into that, praise the Lord. It, scripturally, it tells us it can be stretched. I'm talking about this solid that we call space, the firmament. It can be stretched. It can be torn. It can be rolled up. And all of that contrasts historic belief, even up to within the last hundred years. Okay? So the Bible, look, look at this in Isaiah, for example, Isaiah 34, verse 4. I've thought about this a lot because, you know, you're thinking, well, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. What the heck does that mean? It means for me to have access to what I have from where I came, my inheritance, there's certain things I have to do. I have to re recognize and realize and operate from that. Otherwise, I'm not any better off than everybody else. Right. In other words, it'd be like you traveling to a third world country that's right. impoverished and you have a bank account and credit cards back home that you can draw on, yeah. you know, to pay your rent, to get a house, to get food, clothing, whatever, but you don't ever access it. You're no better than the, all right. the poor people living in that third world country. That's you right. see what I'm saying? Yeah. You have the ability to live above that yes. station but you're not accessing it. So you're no better off than the, than the poverty-stricken people right. that are around you. Right. And that's kind of what this is about. We're from somewhere else. We yes. happen to be here in this fallen earth, but we're not subject no. to the same things that everybody else is because we have access yes. to the spirit realm. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we need to know how to access it, right? You need to yes. know how to fax something or, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. you know, Email it to how whatever you do with that stuff. Praise the Lord. I still have to get on the phone and say, you, could you transfer this? But all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Isaiah 42, verse 5. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. So the firmament or space or whatever you want, it's a solid. Yeah. It's not empty. You know, it's a solid. Mm -hmm. it, not just that it has solid things in it, it is solid. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says it can be stretched, it can be torn, it can be rolled up. Amen. So, Bible, the Bible, or prophecy, which is what the Bible is, the Word of God, is more than just history. And it's more than just what the future might hold. It's an overview of God's complete plan for mankind. Amen. In fact, the more we learn about modern science and quantum mechanics and quantum physics, the more remarkable the creation account in Genesis is. 
the more it really is scientific as well as spiritual. Amen? The more sense it actually makes and the more profound it, it becomes. Why? Because God said. He said. There wasn't anything except sound. And he said, and that sound became physical objects. Solids, what we would call solid here on earth. Amen? So, the very idea of a message, this right here, just the idea to me of a message that comes from outside our time domain means we really need to understand the nature of our reality itself. We've tried to, the church has tried to bring this spiritual message and dumb it down to the earth, yeah. to, to, to just human beings. Yeah. It was never intended for that. It, it was intended for us to be brought back to our original condition. Yeah. And you can't do that just intellectually. You can't do it by just getting some history lessons. And so that's why he has hidden in there these things that point to our yeah. natural life to show us he was way ahead of us. This isn't an accident. We're finding things out now. It's the more you find out, the more you do find out. It's just, it's kind of like the word of God itself. The more you know, the more you're capable of knowing. Because yeah. that's how revelation works. You get a little revelation, it leads you to greater revelation. Yes. And that's, that's the way science is supposed to work. In fact, I, I'm not, I won't get into it, but the truth is, you talk, this people talking about global warming and, you know, uh, climate change because global warming didn't work out real well. It didn't convince anybody. But here's the deal. There is, in, in nature itself, a continual heating. It's thermal. It's constantly heating. And the reason for that is because there has to be uh, heat displacement or heat transfer. Well, once the temperature reaches a certain place, it can't transfer anymore because everything's the same temperature. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It has, the earth was cold. Yeah. And as everything begins to happen, there's heat being transferred constantly. Of course, we know people, you get just come into a room like this, and the more people you've got, the more heat there yeah. is developed from it, right? Well, at a certain point, you don't notice it anymore because there's nowhere for the heat to be displaced. Yeah. The room temperature rises to whatever the temperature of the bodies are that are in it. Well, so my point is this. The theory is that that's how the world ends. I mean, the scripture talks about fire and so on and so forth, but the truth is it just, it'll heat up to the point where there can be no more heat transfer. In other words, the temperature, ambient temperature will be the same. It just won't yeah. change. There won't be any changes in it. And that's when things end. Yep. So, keep your eye on the thermostat, praise the Lord. <laughs> just saying. How many billions of years that might take, I have no idea, but I'm just saying that's, that's the theory. So without, uh, you know, without getting into uh, quarks and, and the smallest subatomic particles and, and all this stuff uh, that make up everything, everything that we see and everything that we experience are these particles, these, these quarks. And, and I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to get into all of that. I've, ta I've taught about this before, but just kind of as a uh, premise here. And then how they act when they're viewed and the fact that they are sound. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, God said. Yep. Sound. sound is, and that sound is still going. He said he yes. spoke this into existence and he maintains it. Why? By the same yes. sound that he spoke originally. The world calls it the Big Bang. You can call it whatever you want to, but it was yeah. God. It, if there was a bang, if there was a sound of a bang, it was God saying, light! Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so uh, look at Philippians 1, or excuse me, Psalms 119, verse uh, 130. Psalms 119 and verse 130. The entrance of thy words give light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Praise the Lord. Quarks are, have 
been determined to just be sound, period. And yet, they are the web of subatomic particles that compose our physical universe. Amen? The very fabric of reality itself. And, the script, or, or, or science tells us, they are affected by observation. They do what we expect them to do, in other words. If, and this is scientifically proven, and I'm just going over it for the, for the sake of you that may not have heard it before. But if, say, Toby and I are both looking at, through a microscope, this powerful microscope, and we have this powerful light, amen, and we're able to see these quarks. Now, if Toby believes them to be solid, he'll see solid. Mm -hmm. If I believe that they're waves, I'll see waves. Now, what does that tell you? They are what we think they are. We can make them whatever we want them to, to be. And, and the, the point behind that is they have what science describes as holographic properties. Now, I'll give you the definition of a holograph. A holographic property or holography is the method, and we've seen these. You, we've got them today. You know, you get the mask, and you see these. And there's nothing there. I mean, they're just... And you, if you didn't know, you'd say, man, I mean, come on, give him a shot. You know, give him something, help him out, because this guy's out of it. And what he's doing is reacting to a holograph that looks real, because you've got the little thing in some film. So this is, this is holography. It's the method of making a three-dimensional photograph without a camera. That seems difficult in itself, doesn't it? And it happens by splitting a laser beam into two beams, and then recording on a photographic plate minute interference patterns made by one beam going from the laser to the plate and the other beam going from the laser to the object to the plate. None of us are going to go out and build a holograph machine tomorrow, but I'm just giving you Webster's definition, okay? The virtual image then can be reconstructed by shining the laser light, white light that we talked about last week, through the development film or through the undeveloped film, right? And Jesus is the light of the world, yeah. right? So science says since all particles are continually interacting yeah. and separating, the what's called the non-local aspects is they possess no dimension. It's a wave, it's a solid, but they actually have no dimension. They're constantly interacting, right? But they don't have any real dimension. And that's, so listen to what I'm saying. That's true. That's a proven fact. So is then the general property of nature. What I'm saying is it's not real. It's not what we think it is. It's really the Matrix movie. Anybody see the Matrix? It's more accurate to this earth than anybody can imagine. Yeah. Best of science is, is proving this, you know? And so uh, Einstein offered evidence that suggests that our world and everything in it are only ghostly images or projections from a level of reality so beyond our own that the reality is literally beyond both space and time. Praise the Lord. Look at James 4.14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. He's saying it's not even real. The suggestion then is that the tangible reality of our day in, day out, quote, normal life is really a kind of an illusion. Mm -hmm. Similar to a holographic image. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're real. 
but this thing we're in is not. Praise the Lord. Under all of this is a deeper order of existence. A vast, more primary level of reality that gives birth to all the objects and appearances of our physical world. In much the same way that a piece of holographic film gives birth to a hologram. Mm -hmm. And that's referred to in physics as the enfolded order. And it refer refers to our level of existence as the unfolded order. Mm -hmm. Right? It's enfolded, it's invisible, but then it's made visible by us yeah. who are here observing mm -hmm. the unobservable. Yeah. <laughs> Now, here's the deal. This view is consistent with the Bible. And it's what the Bible says about our physical world as being subordinate yes. to a larger transcendent spiritual world, which is the superior reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm not trying to just amaze you with scientific facts. I'm trying to get to a place where you can understand why this is important, why it makes any sense to even talk about it in the first place. But Webster defines transcendent as, first of all, God is transcendent. And here's how Webster defines it. Surpassing, excelling, extraordinarily beyond the limit of possible experience. Beyond human knowledge, existing apart from the material universe. Mm -hmm. That's transcendence or transcendency. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or holographic, you could even say, but the things which are not seen are the real things. So God's tell he's explaining this to us before there was any, any way of us comprehending the explanation, right? But because we live in this time, see, there's a reason for us being born this time because we can know some things that those who came before us didn't know so that we can do some things that they couldn't do. They might have done some of these same things, but they did it out of rote or out of just blind kind of religious obedience. But I'm telling you, we have the ability in this day to know why. Amen? And therefore, to know the why gives impetus for the doing, right? I mean, if you don't know why you're doing it, you probably won't do it for very long. But if you figure that part out, then the doing becomes automatic. It becomes normal, right? It becomes the, the thing that we should obviously be doing. And incidentally, the Bible is unique in that it also presents the universe of more than three dimensions, right? It, in fact, without going into all of it, it believes to have as many as ten dimensions. We think there's three. All right, look at Ephesians chapter 3, 18 to 20. While we look not at the things which are seen. Okay, maybe able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. They're already, they're talking about more than three dimensions right here. But it goes on from there. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So the creator is revealed as transcendent over his creation. And that same potential, then, is in us. Yeah. That same power, the same ability is in us. So 1 Corinthians now, chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. I'm saying this so that when we confess the word, or when we say, by his stripes I'm healed, even though I'm feeling bad, even though the doctor's already given me another report, there's a reason for it, and it's not idiotic, and it's not just blind uh, behavior, you know, to a to a rule or to some ritual. Right. There's a reason for it. Yes, there is. God laid it out for us so that we could know, Amen. That this isn't just some religious thing that we do. It isn't like just a rite or a ritual. It's the way we are to live our lives in order to be everything that God has yes. promised us we would be or that we are. Yes. Amen? Amen. So, for you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh or the way of the world. Amen. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. 
God has chosen the weak things of the world yes. to confound the things which are mighty. Yes. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Yes. You want to get rid of sickness? If you're going to bring it to nothing, you, you need to do it the way God said to do it. Finances, yes. relationships, it all works the same way. Amen. And so God, God chose this method of using things that are not manifest, things you can't see naturally, to reduce to nothing the things that you do see. Yes. Yes. God chose to use things or spiritual forces that you cannot see, you cannot feel, you cannot taste, you can't smell them, you can't hear them. And he chose this message, message to reduce to nothing the things that aren't in agreement with his word. So his word would dominate. Yes. It would be preeminent. Yes. In fact, it would be transcendent. Yes. Amen. Remember, sound is everything. Yes. The rest is basically an illusion. This stuff, this carpet, the floors, the buildings. The truth is, if we were seeing in the spirit, we wouldn't see any of this. Praise the Lord. That's why, yes, exactly. That's why Jesus walked through the wall. That's why gravity didn't affect him. He could walk on water. Yes. He, was, he just rose up. Yes. He was here, and then he was gone. They were getting ready to stone him, and then yes. bang, he's, where'd, he, where'd he go? He's off someplace else. Jesus. Amen? Because he wasn't operating by the laws of the earth. He was operating by the laws of heaven, the yes. spiritual laws. Yes. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. I'm not saying go out and try to walk across Gray's Lake today. What I am saying is if you had to, you could. Amen? It, it's, it works for everything, but we need to... I mean, if, I'm not as worried about walking on water or flying without a plane as I am about being healed of some disease that might come along or restoring relationships that are falling apart because of our perception of things. Amen? Or whatever else it might be. Finances, health, yeah. everything. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe yes. and therefore speak. Yes. Verse 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Our light affliction is being in this world. Yeah. Period. Yep. Yeah. While we look not at the things which are seen, yep. but at the things which are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporary, yeah. but the things which are not seen are eternal. The temporary things are not transcendent. They can't change anything. They can't, they're just what they are. Yep. But the Spirit can transcend those natural things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, it can, because it, it's greater. So the unseen realm is the powerful realm. The unseen isn't governed by time. Amen? This is what Tammy was talking about. Instead, it's governed by God's eternal, transcendent, timeless principles. And that's what this Bible is. Einstein's theory of relativity recognized dimensions that we haven't even thought of yet. Seriously. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Peter still laughs at me for telling my time travel jokes. But see, I mean, I think about this because Sally will tell you. I don't, I, you know, I get stuff like everybody else does. But I just don't talk about it. Even if she asks me, I'll say it's, it's good. It's all good. I, I'm telling everything in me sometimes want to say, man, I just feel horrible. I just, I'm wore out on this, I'm that, I'm the, but I'm telling you, I have disciplined myself not to do it. And it's not something that, you know, I'm bragging about. I'm saying, look, it's survival. It's, it's more than just a habit. It's more than just a little trick phrase we have or some gimmick or some ritual. This, this is what works. Yes. And it's the only thing that I know does work. Yes. It does. 
Amen? Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That spiritual power, that transcendent power that we have once we get born again. God, you can call it the Spirit of God. You can call it whatever you want to. It is God. It's that force, amen, that He has given us. Praise the Lord. So the unseen realm is the powerful realm. And I told the Joe, I was telling the, I was wishing Peter would be here just to aggravate him. But maybe he's watching. I can aggravate him anyway. Or you can get the CD. So anyway, I, I, I tell this joke. I said, you know, I wanted to tell you this joke about uh, time travel, Toby, but uh, you didn't like it. Right. Come on. You didn't like it. It's hard. It's hard to go there. Praise the Lord. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Does anybody here remember tomorrow? Praise the Lord. My point is that we live in more than just three dimensions. In fact, time itself is a fourth physical dimension. We think it's just a timeline or something. That's not the case. It's actually a physical dimension. Yeah. And the reason for that is because it's here on this earth. Yeah. And it's the only place it is. So we now realize from the Bible and from physics, we live in the very minimum of four dimensions. Believed to be as much as ten. But at the very minimum, four dimensions, length, width, height, but also the physical dimension of time. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 46 and verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Now, you laughed at me when I asked you if you remembered tomorrow, or that I had a time, joke, uh, time travel joke I wanted to tell you, but you didn't like it. But the truth is, that's exactly what God is saying. So I'm not as dumb as you thought, praise the Lord. <laughs> well, maybe I'm dumber, I just read, praise the Lord. Yeah. Guy told me that once I was in a dentist office over in West Des Moines, and he said, uh, his, I don't know if he had a kid with him or somebody was with him anyway, and they were talking back and forth. And he looked over at me and he said, uh, he was from somewhere out around Eubendale or Clyde. That's what he said. He wasn't from here, obviously. And he said, uh, You must be smart. And I said, Well, why would you say that? You don't know me. I mean, we don't know each other. I said, why would you say that? And he said, because you reads. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> See? <laughs> Pray. Anyway, come on. Let's. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Praise God. So God demonstrates that the source of his message, the word of God, is from outside our domain. It didn't come from man. It didn't come from people. God authored it and men wrote it down. But it came from out there. It didn't come from here. It didn't come from this earth. It came from beyond here. Amen? From another dimension. So when we recognize time is a physical property... And only God is beyond the restrictions of the time dimension. Then you can understand why without faith it's impossible to please God. And that word please literally translates it's impossible to agree with God. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Unless we think different than we think naturally, we can't please God. Why, what does pleasing God mean? He wants to give us all things that pertain to life and godliness, but he can't do it if we don't have faith. We're stuck with what we've got. Now, you might have a little bit more of this phony than I do, or you might have a little bit less of this phony, but it, this isn't what we need. This is all a fake. This is all a hologram. What we need is the real deal. I don't, I don't want to spend the rest of my life fighting phantom warriors, amen, <laughs> on a video of some kind. Yeah, no. And that's what life is. We're out here battling against crap that doesn't even exist. Right. 
Not in the real world. Not in our world. Not in the world that we're from. Playing the end from the beginning. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11, uh, 5 and 6. Am I making sense? I'm not just trying to be weird and strange here, but I'm saying there is a, a direct proportional reality to what science and physics is teaching us relative to the Bible. And it's taken thousands of years for them to catch up, and we still only got a little piece of this, you know. But God put it in there for us. By faith, Enoch was translated, or he transcended, that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him, for before he, his translation he had this testimony, he agreed with God. He agreed this isn't the real deal, this is just a temporary place I'm at for a while, but where I'm really from is where I want to be. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Because he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek yes. him. Amen. Faith sees. Yes. Faith transcends time. Yes. The physical, earthly, inferior realm yes. is why we have faith. To transcend this mess. Yes. Set your mind on things above. Yes. What's he saying? Focus on the things that are not in time. Focus on the reality, not in the holograph. Yes. The things in time are seen. They're felt. They're tasted. They're, they're, they're smelled. They're, they're temporary. They're holographic. But the unseen, that which is outside of time, are eternal, unchanging, transcendent. They are the real. They are the real deal. See, unbelief is anchored in what's in time, what's visible. You might even say it's anchored in things that are reasonable apart from God. Makes perfect sense if you don't believe in God, right? But then there's a contradiction if you believe in God and you're still dealing with a lot of this holograph. Romans 8, verses 5 to 9. All I'm trying to do is get us to see that there is legitimate reasons for confessing what the Word of God says rather than what we're experiencing in the natural. It's not a gimmick. It's not just some thing we do. It's the way we were created to exist. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. Now we're born again. We are of the Spirit. But the truth is, religion has made us more focused on the flesh than on the Spirit. That's why we don't get anywhere. That's why we don't have success. But to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now that's just like he talked to Adam. If you're carnally minded, it doesn't mean you're going to drop dead. It just means you're dead to, to the accessing of the reality that God has for you. Because you're not operating by the Spirit, you only get what's in the natural. You only get what is physically attainable. So to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God or the opposite of God. It's because, and why is it the opposite of God? Because it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. It's not subject to the transcendent laws of God. It's, it's subject to the laws of the earth. Yes. Yes. That's carnally minded. That's, that's what's the opposite of God or enmity with God. Yes. So then they that are of the flesh can't please God. But you are not of the flesh, no. but in the spirit. If so, be the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So if you, here's the deal. If you submit the things of God to the mind of man, unbelief and religion are the result. Period. By faith, we understand. And that's because the source of God's word, true prophecy... Is from outside our time domain. Yep. Meaning you can't see it. 
You can't touch it. You can't taste it. It's not of the flesh. It's not natural to this world. That's why we call it supernatural. It's really not supernatural except here where everything is ruled by the natural. Jesus said, I only say what my Father says. And he was transcending time and space whenever he did it. Healed. Be healed. Take up your bed and walk. Come, get out of the boat, Peter. Walk to me. Right? He's, he's, what's he doing? He's operating by faith. He's transcending this world. This, the laws of nature, amen, were subject to him because the laws he was going by were greater. They were superior. They were transcendent. Yes. And he's given us the same thing. The works that I do, you shall do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Now, if we're not doing the works or greater, it's because we're trying to do them physically or naturally through some natural understanding rather than by the transcendent power of the Spirit of God that's in us and agreement with His Word. John, uh, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. Now, it's fascinating to me. I mean, I love that. I sit and just think about this crap. I mean... The crap I mean by the natural stuff. And, you know, you can just go, you can't out imagine God. You know what I'm saying? More than you can imagine, think, hope. That's what he wants to give us, stuff that we haven't yes. even thought about, that we haven't even yes. dreamed of. Kind of like yes. Einstein said, you know, he'd come up with dimensions that we haven't even thought about asking about. Yes. We don't know they exist. We know so little, we don't even know to ask if they exist. So herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we. Not somewhere else, but in this world. We have the capacity to operate like Jesus in this world. Operate through transcending principles, even though we're stuck in a world that doesn't believe it. That's trying to sell us a bunch of junk that isn't true. Religion idolizes concepts, or better would might be better to say misconceptions. Amen? At the cost (laughs) of personal experience. And then it holds us hostage Mm -hmm. to a world that we aren't supposed to be any part of. Mm -hmm. Born again, Scripture says, not of corruptible seed, not from this world that's corrupt, that's falling apart, that's decaying, that's all that, but by the Word of God, the incorruptible seed, or you could say the transcendent seed. Amen? Amen. John 16, uh, 33. It's just, it's just a matter of thinking differently. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you're thinking in terms of this, it's as good as it's going to get. This is what you get. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you'll have problems. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So you're in a world full of problems, but you don't have to be eating all the problems. Praise the Lord. You know the old saying, life is a sandwich and everybody's got to take a bite? It's the kind of sandwich that we're concerned with here. Amen? Life is a mess and everybody's got to get messy. That's not true. Life is a mess, but we don't have to be messed up because of it. Right. Amen. These things I've spoken to you, right? We are in the world, but we are not of the world. He tells us over and over, yes, you're in the world, but don't think that you have to be governed by that world. Yes. Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? This is the only way you can do it, by the Word of God. 
so that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Because you're not going to prove it by what you see around you here. It's not the will of God that people perish. It's not the will of God that people are abused. It's not the will of God that people go hungry. It's not the will of God that people, uh, you know, suffer disease and sickness. That's not the will of God. How are we going to prove what is the will of God? We've got to function the way he functioned or else we don't have any access to it. It's just something we talk about and everybody goes, yeah, well, great. But, you know, tell that to my cancer doctor. Praise the Lord. The truth is, just like with Adam, he was kicked out of the garden, which was the presence of God, which was this eternal, perfect location, right? And he was kicked out of there, and what happened to him? He became less. He became less than human, what the human was supposed to be originally, and that's my point. Being conformed to this world is being less than fully alive. Because we're being influenced by a holograph. We're being influenced by something that isn't even real. Yes. <clears throat> being born again. Yes. See, but being renewed to your true transcendent reality gives you access to that reality. The reality of healing. The reality of deliverance. The reality of prosperity and whatever the need might be that Jesus provided for us. And it's all by the transcendent word of God, which is the superior reality. Yes. So we think, uh, it's killing me, this uh, bum leg of mine. Or, you know, I don't never be able to get that car paid off. And You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We do this crap, we do. and then we wonder why. Yes. So true. Are we dealing with it? Because... As you speak. Look, as a man believeth. Well, you can't say what you don't believe. I mean, you can't say something without thinking it. And You know what I mean? So we have to be careful. I'd rather be thought, you know, it's an old cliche, but it's true. It's better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sometimes it, it's kind of like me in the dentist's office with that guy. He probably had a higher IQ than me. But his perception was, because I'm reading, I must be bright. No, I was just bored to death. And the truth was, I was looking at more pictures than I was words. But you know what I mean? That's the idea is that we have to, we have to conform to our identity. And the only way to do that is by this. And so Jesus said, he could have said it like this, except that this wasn't all available. He could have said, I only say what the Bible says. But what he said was, I only say what my father says because that's all that's in here. And when he did say what his father said, he got what his father had provided. Whether it was healing or deliverance or whatever it might have been, right? So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? Everybody here can understand natural law because we live with it all of our lives, right? Except maybe for little kids that still want to jump off the couch and then wonder why they get a bruise, yeah. you know, because they think they can fly if they have the big enough towel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It took me a while. I was still jumping off of garage roofs when I was like 13 or 14, so a little slow. But once you learn, you get enough bruises and enough broken bones, you, you'll learn. That's not the way it works. Right? But everybody here, can, we can understand natural law, gravity, etc., thermodynamics, uh, thrust, all those things that are natural laws. We know it works, and we know that it works whether it's cold, whether it's dark, whether it's daytime, you know, whether it's winter, whether it's summer, yeah. whether it's windy, whether it's calm, because it's a fixed law. It's a natural law, mm -hmm. right? So we have sense enough to go along with it for the most part. Unless we want to die, and then we just jump off a building or something, fine. But we understand that if I'm doing this, I'm doing it because I know what the consequences will be. So it's a question of this part of being in a time realm by nature is temporal. 
I mean, the fact that we live X number of years and die is evidenced, right? God's word is spiritual law, higher, transcendent law, superior, eternal, unchanging, never changes. You can't manipulate it and change it. It's always going to be what it is. Amen. John chapter 12, uh, verse 47 to 50. See, it's a big challenge, obviously, when you're faced with a situation or a circumstance that everything in the natural yeah. and everybody in the natural yeah. is telling you this is what the result's going to be yeah. because grandma had it or grandpa had it or the neighbor down the road went through it or some, you know, anything, just something to keep adding to it to make you finally succumb to it. Yeah. Amen. But it's like Tammy said, and I heard this morning, it was, I'm sure it was pertinent because he... Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, that's, if that isn't holographic in nature, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because the shadow can't kill me. No. I'm walking through the shadow. Or I'm walking through a, a holograph. Yeah. Amen. And I'm freaking out about the holograph when it, and it's not real. Yeah. Right? The shadow of a dog can't bite. No. The shadow of cancer can't kill you. The shadow of poverty can't make you go without. Unless you believe the shadow. It's like little kids. You know, you, 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 you've got the same bedroom all day long. You're in and out of there and whatever. And then as soon as the lights go out, something's in the closet. Something's under the bed. Something's, ha something's in my window. Something's under, the, something's under the covers. Why? Because it's now shadows. You can't see. So everything becomes frightening. Everything becomes eerie and, and spooky. That's a definition of this world. Yes. When we have eyes to see yes. and ears to hear, yes. and yet we don't hear and we don't see. Because we're using the natural when we've been given the supernatural. And we're, we're dumbing ourselves down to a phony reality. And letting that reality dictate our life and our existence. Yeah. And that's what Jesus came to deliver us from. Yes. Along with our own destructive behaviors, praise the Lord. Yeah. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. I've not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting or transcendent life. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. He said, you can't take my life. I'm giving it. You don't, you don't have the ability to take my life. Right. I'm giving it for a reason. Right. But all of the forces yep. uh, of the earth can't kill you unless you submit to it. Sure. Well, that's, I, I know, but you've got to start somewhere, okay? I mean, maybe that's not where we're at. Maybe we haven't got to the place where we can believe that. But it's still the truth. And we need to start somewhere. So we better start with, I rebuke this right now in the name of Jesus. Pain, you have no part in my life. Sickness, disease, you have no right here. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, I was healed. Amen. This is what we're talking about. I don't care what it is. I mean, I'm just saying pain, but it could be finances. It could be whatever the thing is you're facing. You've got to realize you have a superior reality to that. And if you don't enforce that into that situation, you're going to be stuck with the mess. It's all the way, that's all you can do, amen? So the only way to overcome time, space, energy, mass, and, and all their influences is to operate in a higher or superior law. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We're not subject to this world unless we subject ourselves to it. 
This is the victory that overcometh the world. Yes. Even your faith. Yes. The word of God. And by it we transcend all natural law, if needed. We are in this world. We are not of this world. It's the hardest thing to not... See, it's what happened to Israel. They come out of the... And, and had the promised land was there available to them. The world they were supposed to operate in. Where the... Honey, you know, flow. Right? Milk and honey. Uh, everything's provided. The houses that you didn't build. Crops you didn't plant. Blah, 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 blah. But what did they see? They saw the giants. Instead of believing in the supernatural that it was just theirs. And in fact, God told Joshua, He said, before you go in, you've been waiting 40 years for this reality. The reality that I promised. Yes. The transcendent principles of God available to you right here. And you've been waiting 40 years and I know you're freaking out and you're still wondering, can we do it? And He said, here's what I want you to do. Do nothing but meditate in My Word day and night. Yes. And if you do, you'll have good success. You'll have what this thing says you'll have. Now, if you want to focus on the giants, if you want to focus on the world, you better be prepared for a butt kicking. Because it will kick you. It will beat you, and it will try to drive you down and take you, everything from you, your, your sense of you know, who you are and what you are and, and why you're here and all that. If you let it, it'll rob you of everything. Amen? That's why he says we're in our army. We've got to fight. And what, what are the weapons of our warfare? They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds that he wanted us to see. Amen? And to declare to them, we are the children of God. We are new creations created in Christ Jesus. Eternal beings. Not ruled by a kind of holographic reality but by the Word of God. Yes. Not a vapor in time, here today and gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm forever here. Yes. Now this other crap may be gone, but I'll still be here. Yep. Amen? It's a dimension, yes. and, and when, it, when I go, when I physically am not here, spiritually, I'll be more alive than I've ever been before. Why? Because all the fake is gone. Oh. All the fright, all the fear, all the anxiety, all the stress, all the worry, it doesn't exist anymore. Those weapons formed against me can't prosper. But every substance of God, transcendent and eternal, always superior. There's something always superior to sickness. It's help. Yes. Superior to death, life. Yes. Superior to poverty, wealth, oh. prosperity. Yes. Superior to dysfunctional relationships, wholeness, oneness. Yes. Yes. All right, we'll quit with this. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 through 11 again. Somebody down there just got a revelation. Don't talk back to the teacher. <laughs> and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, we just talked about, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Yes. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. That those powers are anemic and, and nothing if you operate the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ yes. Jesus God, our Lord. Lord. That's the purpose. Hey, what does it say? By one man's death... All died, or many died. By one man's obedience, mm -hmm. I should say. Yeah. By one man's disobedience, many died. Adam. Right? By one man's obedience, many were made to become the children of God. But not only that, but to reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Amen. To reign in How many of you would like to reign for a while before we leave here? Amen. Yes. 
I'm tired of being rained on. I, I, I'm so sick of commercials and, yeah. you know, the f political junk. I turn it off as quick as it comes on or I shut the sound off or whatever because all it does is just really irritate the crap out of me because I've been around long enough to see enough elections to know that it's all BS. Yes. They make promises they cannot keep. That's right. We know they can't because as soon as they get elected, the Congress or the Senate will stop them from doing anything they want to do so that they'll get reelected the next time. And I'm not picking sides here. I'm just saying that's the nature of the beast. Yes. I don't care what party you are. It's all about get me in. Yes. So I can get what I want, right. and I'll promise you anything to get elected. Even yeah. though I know while I'm standing here telling you this, I can't do it. Yeah. I want to do it. Maybe, they, or maybe they're sincere and they really want to, but that doesn't mean they, have, they don't have sense enough to realize they can't just because they want to. Right. I don't know how many elections I've been through, and I've voted in every one of them, but uh, I, I, I'm just so disgusted with the whole And I'll vote. I mean, I'll vote next November again, and, and yeah. whenever there's elections, I'll do that. But I'm not naive enough to think that whoever it is that I'm voting for is actually going to accomplish what they said they was going to accomplish. I, I, I'm voting more for their, for their want to yeah. than their will to. If I'm not trusting God, right. man, I mean, you don't have to watch many of these no. things to know if you don't have God on your side, you are in serious trouble. trouble. We got some real issues. There better be something better than this. Right. Or we are all the proverbial had. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just the way it is. But I'm not going to let that dominate me. I'm not going to let it depress me and aggravate me and make me angry. I mean, there's stuff in me that I could really do some na nasty things that, yep. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Just because they just irritate me so much. They need to be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be some pain inflicted. I mean, I'm serious about this. I don't, I don't know how we do it. But, not, but my point is this. No, I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to be anxious and aggravated and frustrated and somebody says I'm this and I'm that so I don't like them anymore because they're a thing or they're a this thing or they're a that party or some other party. Look, this is bigger than parties. It's bigger yeah. than presidents. It's, it's bigger than all of this stuff. There is a God yes. who, if we will allow him, yes. be in charge. Yes. Amen? Yes. And that's where we're at. And if we want that, then we have to abide by those rules and those principles. Yes. And that's how you do it. Yes. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to know this thing front to back. You can find the scripture. You, yeah. If you don't have a concordance, you probably got a smartphone or something. You can find in a hurry every scripture about sickness yeah. or disease or about healing. You can find plenty of scriptures about prospering and, yes. and, and so on and so forth. You can find scriptures about restoration and healing and yes. deliverance and, and all of those things. They're there. All you got to do is just take a minute, get on the computer or look it up in the Bible and just when you open your mouth, say that or yes. don't say anything. Yes. Praise the Lord. We need this, church. How are we ever going to influence a world? Look, if religion could do it, it would have done it. It's had 2,000 years. In fact, it's had more than that, but yeah. 2,000 years from the time of Christ to change, to make things better. But it hasn't. No. We might have a higher standard of living, but we're still living beneath yes, our, 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 who we are in Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. We need to get, if we're going to get upset, let's get upset with our lack of being faithful to this word and then wanting to blame our circumstances or God or the devil for things that we actually have control over, but we're not right. doing what we're supposed to be right. doing. That's right. That's right. We give way too much credit to the devil and not near enough credit That's to right. God. That's right. Praise the Lord. Have I irritated you? Have I worked you up? Have I got you in a lather? Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let's get some. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just, the only reason I'm bringing this stuff up this way is because it'll stay, you'll think about it more than you would if I just read the same scriptures over and over and over to you. But this is a reality. Yes. This is our true identity. This is, our, this is what we're capable of. Yeah. And to live so far beneath our, our station, only so we can complain about it, is just idiotic. It's the old, another old cliche, but it's so true. <laughs> Million dollars sitting in the bank, 
and starving to death because I don't want to write a check. Yep. We got all of it. We've got everything that we have need of. We just need to write the check. And the way you write the check, is right here. Say the truth. And it has to come to pass. Doesn't have to come to pass in 10 seconds. Doesn't have to come to pass. But it has to come to pass. And that's why we have to continue to say what the word says because it will overcome the natural laws, whether it's sickness or whatever it might be. It will overcome it with the supernatural, with the transcendent, because it doesn't change. Right? Facts change. We know they do because the fact is the earth was once, the fact was it was once square or flat. Yeah. Right? I mean, that was the facts back then. <laughs> but it just wasn't the truth. Well, there's lots of facts floating around out here right now, and we're buying into it and saying it's the truth when it's not the truth at all. It's as, it's as wrong as the wor world being flat. Yep. We just didn't know it until somebody had the courage to go as far as they could go yep. and prove that they were wrong. And that's our challenge right now. We're on the voyage to a new world, praise the Lord. And in America, it's heaven. Yes. It's heaven on earth. It's yes. God's rule here yes. in Jesus' name. Everybody give the Lord a hand. Yes. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Let's just... Let's be who we are. Amen. Let's, let's take some stuff back. Let's take some territory back. Amen. Don't let the fake fool you. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great week.